Hi, everybody. Welcome. I am so excited. I have such a special treat for you. This is my sweet friend, Lisa Davis. She's a colleague. She's a mentor. She is the person that really educated me about safe cosmetics, non-toxic beauty, things to clean up what we put on our skin. And after going through my own cancer journey, I you know, went to the food and I went to the big things of reducing my toxic load, but the makeup and the cosmetics are one of those that was lower on my list, but it's still just as important. And this is a question that I get asked all the time. What do you recommend for non-toxic makeup? What is safe makeup? How do we find options that are going to work for us? So I just thought, you know what, let's just go straight to the expert. Let's just bring Lisa in to share and educate and teach. And Lisa, we're so grateful that you're here. Thank you for coming and educating and sharing with us today. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura, for having me on. I'm so honored and excited. Um, and, you know, this is the topic that I'm very passionate about, just as you are passionate about, you know, sharing about your journey to health and how essential oils have supported you so much in that journey, you know. Um, and I am with you on that. Like, I love what they've done, what essential oils, how they've helped me and my family. Um, I was on this hunt, like a long time search for safe makeup because I had switched out everything else in my home, all my other, you know, personal care products, cleaning products, hair care, you name it. I'd switched it out to non-toxic safe products that performed, but I couldn't find a makeup line that I truly loved and trusted that I knew that I knew was really, really filled with good ingredients. And then when I finally was introduced to Crunchy, I couldn't quite believe it. And I couldn't quite believe the performance. And um, I think, you know, our ratings speak for themselves. You know, we are a one, all of our products are rated a one in EWG. And I feel like that just speaks for itself. Um, but just to give you guys a tiny bit of a background, a background on Crunchy. Um, so we have several things set us apart. Um, we have, and I, I, it, it's gonna be backwards. <laughs> and I apologize for that. Um, but we have badges that apply to our products. And um, our products are consciously packaged. We're actually moving towards 100% recyclable and recycled packaging. Um, and we are just constantly taking steps to improve our packaging and switching to all glass and paperboard. Um, so fully recyclable and just, and actually, as you know, glass is much easier to recycle than plastic. So we're thrilled about these changes that we've been making. Um, the products are made with certified organic ingredients and a handful of safe synthetics. Um, the products are either vegan or vegetarian, gluten-free, non-GMO, toxin-free, cruelty-free, and proudly, all the makeup and skincare is proudly made in the USA. And they're also just thoughtfully produced. So these badges make me very, very proud. And um, on my website, um, crunchy.com slash Lisa Davis, you'll be able to see we have full 100% transparency. So for every single product, there's a, a complete ingredient list, list underneath that product. So you can see exactly what is in each product. If you say to me, you know, Lisa, I happen to have an allergy to, for example, lavender. There are people who have an, an allergy to lavender. They can look on my website and look up that particular product and see, oh, okay, there's, you know, there's lavender extract in this product. I am not gonna be able to, not gonna be able to use it. Um, so that's what I love about our products, that complete transparency, you know what's in the products you're using. The other thing is, and again, I apologize, it's gonna be backwards. We have a blacklist um, of over 1300 harmful toxic chemicals that we are, will never allow to be in our products. Um, and we follow the European Union standards for safety and efficacy with the ingredients that we use in our products. So those banned blacklisted ingredients, you will never find them in our products. And just a very, very, just to name a few of the heavy hitters um, that I know Dr. Laura is very familiar with, and I'm sure she's educated you guys on um, parabens. We avoid those synthetic preservatives. Synthetic fragrance is a huge no-no, um, something that we always wanna avoid. Um, oxybenzone, octanoctate, octanoxate, um, pegs or polyethylene glycols, another synthetic preservative, um, formaldehyde releases, 1,4-dioxane, and um, there's several others, including nanoparticles and talc. Many others I won't go into right now, but gratefully, Crunchy just avoids all of these harmful chemicals in our products. All right, so with that being said, um, you can always make the best a little bit better. You can always enhance brightness. <laughs> and as much as I love our Crunchy makeup and skincare line, I also love um, adding in and enhancing it with some of the beautiful doTERRA essential oils that Dr. Ritchie has um, lovingly introduced me to. And so I just kind of want to go over just a few of the things that I use and then I enjoy using in my products. And I also want to highlight actually some of my favorite crunchy products for you guys today. Um, and again, I, I am not an expert 
um, in oils by any stretch. I've done a little bit of reading. Thankfully, Dr. Laura has helped to educate me a great deal. Um, but she, I defer to her um, expert, <laughs> you know, expert research and knowledge. Um, but I take it very seriously. When I put something on my body or when I put it in my body, I want to know what I'm using and I want to know how it's going to affect me, how it's going to affect my skin, how it's going to affect my health and my body. So that's what made it, you know, very important for me to really know what I was using and to get behind it fully. Um, so with that being said, um, so we, Crunchy does have a few skincare items. We actually have a sunscreen um, that just debuted that I am absolutely in love with. Um, but for, so I start my day with daylight moisturizer. And to my daylight moisturizer, um, I add um, a drop of Copaiba oil to my moisturizer. And um, what I love about it is that um, the Copaiba, I believe, helps to keep my skin clean and clear and helps to reduce the appearance of blemishes, just as we talked about a short while ago um, in my group that Dr. Laura mentioned. So I do a drop and I actually put it in this dropper bottle just because it's so much easier to just take the drops out. So I put one in my, um, morning and I do about two pumps of daylight moisturizer and I just smooth it over my face and it feels amazing. And I know every now and then, of course it's related to my cycle, but every now and then I do have that little breakout happening. And I find that this really just helps to control breakouts. Um, and I am absolutely in love with Copaiba anyway, <laughs> for many reasons. Um, so I absolutely love that in my oil. And what I love about daylight moisturizer is that it um, has a base of aloe vera which is just, has just incredibly soothing properties for your skin. Um, and especially as my skin matures, I am 48, my skin is definitely maturing and I'm noticing changes. Um, the aloe vera just helps support my skin health. And I'm at that really sort of awkward stage where I still have blemishes, but I also have some fine lines and larger pores and texture. I'm like, fabulous. I'm aging, you know, towards one way and the other way. I have, I have teenage skin and approaching 50 year old skin. <laughs> Um, but that's fine. So um, we also, it has jojoba oil, it has hyaluronic acid and avocado oil. They're just amazing moisturizing properties. Um, and these are just really wonderful ingredients to look for in your moisturizer. So moving on to my very, very, very favorite product, and I'm pretty sure it's Dr. Laura's favorite product too in the Crunchy lineup, um, is our Smart Primer. It is. And I love our Smart Primer, Mwah, right? <laughs> All of the love for this cute little bottle. Um, so. My reasons for loving a primer are many, but primarily um, I never knew I needed primer until I started using it with you know, Crunchy's primer. And then I realized it's literally just that beautiful layer for your face. It's like that protective layer. I, there's no other way to say it's spackle for your face. <laughs> it fills in fine lines, pores, texture, um, any small wrinkles that you might have, and it just smooths everything out. And it actually has a slight blurring effect so even if you're going without makeup, it's still amazingly important and wonderful to wear your primer. Um, it just gives your face that lovely blurring effect. And it also is that perfect canvas for your foundation to go on top of. And what I love to add to my primer is, and I actually did put it in this lovely dropper bottle, um, Yero Palm. I am in love with Yero Palm. And I know that Dr. Laura could jump in here and, and really wax eloquently about her love of Yero Palm as well. So glad she introduced me to it. Um, so yarrow essential oil, as we know, has soothing, smoothing and emollient properties for the skin. Um, so what I find is that it just amps up the effects of my primer. It's just, it's like that extra sort of one-two punch um, for my primer that I really love. Um, and what I also love is that pomegranate seed oil, also of course in the yarrow palm, um, does some pretty incredible things for the skin. It stimulates keratinocytes, fights free radicals, soothes inflammation, improves skin texture, and provides antioxidants. And by the way, I am 48. My neck, I, there, I've noticed changes in my neck, but since I've incorporated Yarrow Palm into my routine, guys, my neck is looking a lot better these days. <laughs> I get pretty excited. <laughs> it's like this combination of the primer, daylight, nightlight, which I'll get to in a second, and the Yarrow Palm is like the, the key to all of this. So I've definitely noticed some enhancements in the neck area, which I'm, and I will continue to liberally apply it. <laughs> for that reason. Um, so what I love um, is that I really think this is a crucial part of um, helping with aging skin. And I know that you can also take it internally, um, but I, and I wanna talk a tiny bit. I know that Dr. Laura, again, Dr. Laura is the expert and she has trained on these things several times, but I love that it's an incredible source for punicic acid, which is an omega-5 
um, antioxidants, beta caryophylline and shimazuline. Is that how you say it? Shimazuline? Yep, perfect. Shimazuline, you nailed it. Wonderful. Love it. And so what I absolutely adore about Euro Palm is that it supports cellular immune and nervous system function, nervous system function and rejuvenation when taken internally. But I love what it's doing for my skin externally as well. So I'm pretty pumped about Euro Palm. So I highly, highly recommend this duo right here for really amazing skin. Um, so, and I also want to talk about something else that I incorporated because as, so, you know, look, Dr. Laura was just training in my group how um, she does her oil pulling um, with Copaiba in the shower to um, kind of, you know, first of all, to maximize, you know, to, to try and like move her schedule along because there's a lot we have to do during the day. We can't really be doing everything and we have to do combine all, you know, multiple things in one step. So one thing I like to do is I like to do facial massage. I really think that um, helps, you know, with drainage of your lymphatic system. And I actually, I notice less puffiness when I do in, in specific manners, when I do my lymphatic drainage massage. And what I love doing is I definitely incorporate some yarrow palm into that um, facial massage. And it helps soothe tension, helps lymphatic drainage, helps reduce puffiness. And my skin just feels velvety and amazing. So I highly, highly recommend that technique. Um, so the next thing I want to chat about is, um, I, this maybe is just my favorite. As much as I love Copaiba and Euro Palm, guys, lavender, <laughs> lavender is just, I just love it. <laughs> I diffuse it all day. I use it in everything. I just, everything I need, I just throw lavender oil in it, whether it's diffusing or I'm making a blend, lavender's got to find its place in there. Um, but what I really love using lavender for is definitely definitely in my mascara i put a drop in my crunchy mascara and i find that it just amps it up and just gives it that little bit of like looseness that the mascara needs and then the formulation is just that much better um so i really love putting a drop of lavender oil in my mascara i highly recommend doing that just one drop right away when you get your tube you will be so happy that you did the other thing that i know about lavender oil is that studies have shown um, that lavender has been used to treat hair loss and that over 44% of um, participants saw significant hair growth. Um, and so they, it was a statistically significant degree of people saw improved hair growth. So um, you can certainly make a lash serum that includes lavender oil to help regrow your brows and to help with your lashes. Um, so I love that. And I actually found um, a fabulous lash primer, which is not crunchy. This is real purity. It's 100% wonderful ingredients. So I actually added a drop of lavender oil um, into this real purity. Um, it's a lash primer, and I've been using it for my brows and my lashes, and I love it. Um, and the ingredients check out perfectly. So lavender for your lashes, lavender for your brows, lavender for all your hair. <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, but I love it in, in the mascara. So um, I, Crunchy is coming out with a brow gel very soon. We do not have the brow gel yet. Um, it's still sort of undergoing the final tests. Um, it's actually going to be a brow pomade and it's going to be, I think, four or five different shades available. So I'm over the moon excited about that. Um, and what I can recommend or suggest for um, adding to the brow gel when it comes out is lavender oil and rosemary oil. So one drop of each. Um, same reason, hair regrowth and just strength of the hair. Um, I think there have also been study, studies that shown that, um, so with your, um, most of our products have a shelf life of either six months or a year. So the moisturizers have a shelf life of six months um, and all the other products have a shelf life of a year, including the mascara. But once you open the mascara, you really have to pitch it and get a new one after three months, no matter which brand of mascara you use, because of how, um, you know, because of the design of the tube, you know, dirt and air and impurities get introduced into the tube every time you open it up and take the, the wand out and you use it and you put it back in, you're introducing um, those impurities into your mascara. So it's important to um, get a new tube every three months. And that's another important reason to add in that drop of lavender oil because it can help reduce um, the levels of impurities. It's like a natural antibacterial protectant, as you know, Dr. Laura, and it can help um, really prevent the growth of nasties in your tube. But highly, highly recommended to pitch it every three months and start fresh. Even if you're not using it every day, that bacteria is still growing. 
That's such a good so, tip. When I started, you inspired me to like put a little alarm on my phone after yeah. three months of like, plus you can kind of tell like the mascara is so amazing. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, it's been too long. Oh yeah. Well, that's, I have so many women reach out to me and they're like, mascara crisis. <laughs> like it's dried up. It's, it's like, it's like the mascara tube knows. It just stops working after three months. It's like, nope, you need a fresh tube. <laughs> So you can set a reminder in your phone, which I, I highly recommend, but also the mascara tube will tell you. <laughs> it will tell you when it's time for a new tube. <laughs> I love that. Um, so definitely a drop of lavender oil and rosemary oil in the brow gel, um, whatever you're using, or when, you know, the crunchy brow pomade is coming out and it's going to be unbelievable. Um, and right now I do recommend um, Jane Iredale Clear Brow Gel. Um, that's actually, it's a good gel. The ingredients are good. It works pretty well if you need something to tame your brows. Um, unfortunately for me, I overplucked for years and years. I don't necessarily, I, I don't need to tame what I have. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, no need to tame. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is- oh, um, To interrupt you, I was just gonna stop you for one second. Uh, Leslie yeah. asked if you could show us the brush to the mascara. Absolutely happy to. So a word about the mascara. I, first of all, I love this brush. Um, it's like perfectly designed to reach all of your lashes. Can you see that? There we go. Can you see that? Um, so it's really the perfect design, designed to reach all of your lashes and um, like to really just distribute the mascara perfectly. And the mascara has green tea fibers. And those green tea fibers are key because they're just going to really build up your lashes. And you, you know, if you do several coats, you take your time, use the tip of the wand, and then alternate with the flat of the wand, you can really build up the coats a lot. So you can get some really amazing lashes, especially if, um, you know, I always recommend this if using a lash primer first and then um, going in with the mascara, you can really amp up your lashes big time. So I love them. Yep. Um, so the next step for me is my lips are always dry, especially in the winter months, even if I'm, you know, scrubbing and, you know, even if I'm really trying to be mindful of drinking more water, my lips are always dry. Um, so I actually like to take just one drop of frankincense and just rub it all over my lips. And I find that it just has such healing and soothing properties. It really just kind of helps um, my lips get back into really good shape. I call it lipstick shape because <laughs> it's, it's hard if you have dry lips and you try to put lipstick on, um, it's not going to look good. It's going to look all patchy and spotty. So you really, you know, you want to scrub your lips. You want to drink a lot of water. Okay. But um, a little drop of frankincense on your lips really, really helps. So my, one of my, my, probably my second favorite product is our lip gloss. Our lip gloss, this is like my love language. Like if there's, if there's a way to my heart, <laughs> it's through crunchy lip gloss. I have and to say that Lisa, I have tried a lot of non-toxic and it's a big mess. It's a goop. It's like, and this stuff, it. It's like, oh, it was, it was magical. <laughs> it's the it's best so good. Gloss I have ever tried. It is incredible. Yeah, thank you. It really is the unicorn of lip gloss. It truly is. And, um, and what I love about it is it's not goopy. It's not sticky. Um, it's super hydrating. So I don't need lip balm. All I need is my trusty lip gloss. This is, this is, it's got jojoba oil and, you know, rosehip oil. And um, uh, it just, it's, it's got it's shea butter. It has everything you need. And, I actually say this about all the products. It has everything you need and nothing you don't. All the bad stuff is not in there and all the wonderful good stuff is. Um, so the, so the essential, so this has um, actually lavender, uh, not lavender, sorry, vanilla plentifolia extract. So it has a lovely vanilla scent, but I like to do a little lip plumping effect. So I will add a drop of peppermint essential oil to my lip gloss and it just really kind of helps to plump up my lips. Um, so that is my hack for the crunchy lip gloss. So a little drop of pepper. And of course, as we know, pepper essential oil is one of our favorites and you can use it for headaches. You can use it for if, to diffuse when you need a little pick me up, which I need all the time. <laughs> um, but one of my favorite uses is to pop it right in here. And then it just gives that, gives that lovely plumping effect to your lips. So that is one of my favorite uses of the doTERRA oils for the lip gloss. I and love then, um, I and, and I, go ahead. Before I got into this and uh, really was looking at getting rid of the chemicals, before I got sick, right, and I didn't know any better, I remember in high school when, what was it, Bath and Body Works came out with a peppermint 
lip gloss, lip balm, and I loved that minty, but then I realized, oh, this is horrible, <laughs> right? There's like all kinds of stuff in there. And so this has been the best fix because you get a beautiful color, it's non-toxic, because a lot of other companies out there, they'll put lead in the colored lip glosses and things, and what you just said, I, I just second it. It is so good to just add a little bit of peppermint, and it gives me that sensation, you know, kind of freshens your breath a little bit, plumps up your lip, and it, it was like the missing link that I needed from really missing the other. I'm such a mint girl, but it's, it's pretty awesome. It's amazing, absolutely, and that's my favorite thing. I put that drop right in there. And the other thing too is, you know, in addition to lead, in so like I just I, there's a particular company. It rhymes with mitments. <laughs> rhymes with mitments. <laughs> um, and you know, their big claim to fame is, oh well, our lipstick lasts for 24 hours. Anything that lasts for 24 hours on your face, not good. Okay, not good. Um, you want to avoid that. And I'm going to put in a plug for there's something just so wonderful and feminine about being able to apply gloss to your lips every few hours. And just that little swipe, it just kind of reminds you, you know what? I'm a girl. That's okay. <laughs> it's an act of self-care. Yes. It's, it's a moment of self-care and it's fabulous. Um, so in addition to nasty things like lead um, in your lip gloss and lipstick, you know, um, traditional lipsticks that you're going to find in like the drugstore, department store, Whole Foods. Um, they have, their pigments are like the red, the red that you see is from crushed up beetle shells that Carmen is that crushed up beetle shells. So, you know, if you're looking to, I mean, and gross, like no one wants to put bugs on their lips. Like if, so if you're looking for something that's cruelty free, but also like free of grossness. <laughs> like, yeah. Amen, sister. Ooh, no, it's a no. <laughs> no, it's a no on that one, right? So much better to choose products like this. Um, with pigments that are just simply minerals from the earth that are EcoCert certified, um, as opposed to gross beetle shells. Nope, not happening. <laughs> so finally, I want to talk about, so that's based, that is a lot of my daytime routine of how I sort of add essential oils in um, to my makeup and skincare. Um, but when I talk about my nighttime routine, and so we do have a wonderful night light night cream. And what I love to do is I love to add a drop of actually lavender to my night cream. Um, and as we know, lavender has those wonderful soothing properties. Um, as Dr. Laura mentioned, the florals are just wonderful for helping you relax and kind of helping you get into that bedtime zone, that sleepy time zone. And um, Nightlight does have lavender and hibiscus extracts in it, which are magnificent. But of course, me being me, I love to amp up the lavender, so I do a drop when I get my little um, drop of nightlight and I just apply it all over my face. I do a little more massage, a little more self-care at night. Um, that also actually really helps me with my bedtime routine. But what I love also about lavender, um, in addition to reducing the appearance of skin imperfections, it fights acne, it soothes eczema and dry skin. It's an amazing anti-inflammatory, detoxifies skin, can help to heal injured skin, helps prevent wrinkles, and of course it smells so amazing. Um, so you know, of all the products to add, I do love adding lavender to um, my nightlight night cream. And what I love about, um, I want to just read a few ingredients. Um, you know, when you're looking for like a night cream, you want something that's a little bit heavier, that's really going to, um, you know, give your skin, this is like sort of the deeper cellular repair work. So um, a moisturizer that you use for daytime is hydrating, it's moisturizing, it's a perfect layer underneath what else you're putting on it. Obviously your sunscreen, um, your primer and then makeup if you're wearing makeup on top of that. But you know, for nighttime, you want something that's going to do some sort of deeper cellular repair work. So again, this has a base of aloe vera, which is incredible. Um, and it has jojoba oil and um, argan oil. And argan oil is one of my favorite oils. Um, it is a really, really wonderful like skin healing oil. And it is from the argan oil, it's from the argan tree. And it is just, it's a magnificent oil to be included. It's also actually in our blush. Our blush is made with argan oil as well. Um, and it's just one of those incredible oils that has lots of wonderful healing properties to it. So ladies, let me know if there are any questions, if any questions at all um, about what we chatted about. And um, I just, I love combining these two lines together. I think they really do go together like peanut butter and jelly. And um, I see a lot of differences in my skin. I know Dr. Laura is very happy with her beautiful skin. Um, how it looks and um, you know it's just been it's been a great uh, pairing and a great combination to use these two lines together 
Oh, this is so fantastic, Lisa. Thank you. And yes, we'll wait. We'll type your comments in if you're on Zoom or on Facebook Live. We, um, we've gotten a couple of comments and people have been saying they're so happy about this. She's been make it free for a year after learning all of this. And so this is kind of fun to talk a little bit more about other options, which I love. And you know, guys, doTERRA stays in their swim lane. They are first and foremost an essential oil company. That is never going to change. And I'm grateful for that, that we stay in our swim lane. And Emily Wright has even said that. So it's so nice to bring in safe, non-toxic options of makeup like Crunchy. And as Lisa said, it's all of those things. It's a lifestyle. I noticed cleaning up my diet helped my skin and taking my lifelong vitality pack supplements and using the essential oils and adding in a safe, non-toxic makeup like Crunchy. I just feel like it's all supported my skin in so many ways. And my one tip that I was going to add, Lisa, and if you, I'd love if you wanted to expand on this too, is using something like On Guard essential oil or tea tree from a Luca essential oil to clean the makeup brushes. Mm -hmm. Would you love to speak on that? Because I know I, for one, <laughs> can be a little lazy with that and I need to like step it up a little bit. You know, just to clean our users, we need to clean our makeup brushes. Oh yeah, it's like, I kind of have a little, like once a week I have a little pity party. I'm like, what, what? I don't want to do it. And then I'm like, okay, I have to. I have to set the example. Um, so I clean my makeup brushes once a week. And I do, we do Crunchy Cells, a brush cleaning pad that is really fabulous. I think you have that, Dr. Laura. And you just kind of stick it down in your sink. And then you can use any non-toxic, um, like I actually use a dish detergent, not detergent, but like a dishwashing soap called Better Life. Um, and I will mix in, you can mix in a drop of tea tree. Um, you can mix in a drop of On Guard. Um, and then you can just wash your brushes. So I just get them like, I actually have a video of how to wash them um, on my client page, but you can just um, foam them up and then you just, you just brush them like back and forth on the brush pad and you just keep rinsing them with warm water. Um, and you never want to get the water. I wish I had a, guys, hang on one second. Let me grab a brush. Yes, we're going to get the demo. This is so a great. visual is even better. <laughs> um, you never want to get the water up into the ferrule of the brush. So, you always want to wash them down like this. And so I will get like the soap and the drop of oil in my hand and I will mix it up together. And then I just rinse it underneath warm running water and I brush it back and forth along the brush mat, the wash mat. Um, and then I just continue with that. I just continue like getting it soapy, um, washing it by, br you know, brushing it back and forth over the brush cleaning pad and then rinsing it. And then when I, um, when you see it's clean, when the water runs clean, you can see the brush is clean. You never want it Put it like this because you don't want the water to get down the ferrule. You never want to immerse it in water. Um, if I, if sometimes like this is the flat tap foundation brush which I use with the foundation, I highly recommend um, using this together with this for best results. Um, I, I want to soak this. This does tend to get a little bit of foundation in it, so I'll soak it. But I'm only going to soak it like up to here. All right, I'm not going to soak it further up because you just again, if you get the water into the ferrule of the brush, it will cause the bristles to fall out. So. Um, I may soak it first, and then I'll wash it, and then I'll dry it flat. Okay. Some women even dry it upside down. They just have like a little, you know, thing they can tie it to. But I'll just dry it flat. You never want to dry it like this because again, you don't want the water getting into the base of the brush. So just dry them flat. And once a week, ladies. And really, the main reason here is because we want to avoid the dirt, the buildup of dirt and bacteria in our brushes because that can actually um, really just cause the cycle of acne to continue and get worse over time. Um, we don't even realize like what's lurking in our brushes. So it really is critical to wash them you know, every week if possible. And for sure, the, my, the foundation brush, if you use a concealer brush, those are like the two worst offenders, but the other, every brush should be washed every week regardless and only takes a few minutes. It really only takes a few minutes. Um, and a drop of, as you said, you know, tea tree um, or Melaleuca, any of those like um, antibacterial oils will really um, help to you know, get your brushes um, squeaky clean and safe for use. And it actually extends the life of your brushes. Um, and, you know, every time I talk to a client, like there's always that guilty as charged because, you know, it's been years. It's been a long time <laughs> since the brushes really got clean. And um, if they're struggling with acne or with skin that they're not thrilled with, that usually is one of the, um, you know, one of the causes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. We have several questions that are coming in. Okay. So uh, one, Leslie actually says she loves argan oil. She says, thank you, Lisa. Side question, are your necklaces beautiful? 
is a diffuser necklace. Where did you get it? Um, so this necklace is really old and I think it's honestly like J. Crew from years ago. <laughs> awesome. We're, all the beauty things today, right? Okay. I, know, I love it. We're such uh, girls. <laughs> Heather asks, the lipstick ingredients, doesn't list what they use to add pigment. Um, what is used there? That is um, a great question. And so we use um, minerals from the earth. They are um, Echo Cert certified. And um, what I can do is I, ha I have to look at the list and I can tell you like what are the pigments that are, that are used. I'd have to look at the list um, on yeah. the website, but I can like even type that in. Yeah, we'll get back to you, Heather. On that for sure. And then um, Cami says, <laughs> she says, if we get started with Crunchy, do we start with an advocate or do we just purchase from the website? Um, so Cami, you're going to go to Lisa's website. Um, and I put, pop that in the link. We'll put it above this too, crunchy.com forward slash Lisa Davis. Mm -hmm. And she is yeah, going and, to- um, Actually, Dr. Laura, you have a, an event link. You have a party oh. link. So I will get that created for you and I will, um, you can add that to, um, to this post. Perfect. So we'll get that going. So yeah, Cami, and want it just similar to like doTERRA. I love working with Lisa. And again, I don't get paid anything to say this, or I, I truly love the products. I've been using the products for years now. And just like we have this learning with Dr. Laura group, which is a safe community, which we do regular education and support. Lisa has the same thing and it is awesome. And she hops on and she does tutorials and she like, she so beautifully demonstrated. She has something about how to clean brushes and how to use things. So it's nice when you have that support. Whereas if you get a product and it's just sitting in your bathroom because you don't feel confident knowing what to do with it, like we're not going to let that happen. Yeah. Um, That's just, never going to happen. Um, yeah. Aline, she says, my skin is very sensitive since chemo. What is the best thing I can start using? That's a great question. Um, for you, I actually recommend um, maybe a sample pack. Um, I put together beautiful sample packs and I send them out for free. Um, so for anyone with sensitive skin, especially if you have gone through chemo, if you're experiencing some of the after effects of that and of treatment, um, I would love to send you um, a sample pack and we can get you started that way and we can see what, you, what works with your skin and then go from there. I will tell you that um, the primer is wonderful. I actually have several clients who are currently going through chemo or have in the past gone through chemo and they found the primer to be wonderful and soothing because of the aloe vera and the other really healing ingredients um, in the primer. And I would throw myself into that group of just having very sensitive skin and I've never had a reaction with any of my crutchy makeup. One of my sweet oilers, she said, I just could not wear eye makeup or mascara or anything because she was having such reaction to it. And she messaged me and said, Laura, this is the first time that I've been able to wear mascara and makeup. Like the crunchy line really worked well for her. So. Yeah, I have to agree. It's, we, I'm so grateful for this line because the, so I couldn't use most makeup. I would try it and I just, I, I, my skin would break out. I just, I really wasn't able to use it well at all. I couldn't use any mascara. This is the first mascara that I've been able to use that didn't cause my eyes to water and tear terribly. So it's really, for anyone with sensitive skin, this is really a, a wonderful line to use. Oh, and Cami said, she's so happy to hear that. Thank you. I have had so many makeup products I've invested in years ago, but don't feel comfortable using them anymore due to not understanding the ingredients. Oh, Cami, I feel you. I did it, a mass exodus. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, okay, we're just clean slate, right? Yep. We're just, yep. and, and this is what I love is that it's a lifestyle. We bring in the essential oils and you start to look at the chemicals in your home and the toxins and the air fresheners and the plugins and all of these things. And I think it's just another natural step to start looking at our hygiene products and makeup and, and all of that. You don't have to do it all at once. It's, it's a journey, but we start to become more aware as consumers what we're putting on our body. And I think I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And I feel like taking that first step is the most important thing. Even if it's swapping out one product, that's huge, right? Because you're taking that first step. And, you know, just as doTERRA will never step into makeup, we're never, Crunchy's never stepping into essential oils. Like we're, we're sticking with this. <laughs> um, and we I think all know our swim lane, right? We know yes, what we're we, we stay in our lane. It's to get safe makeup. doTERRA, they do essential yes. oils. 
their jam. Because what we do, we do really, really well. And that's what we want to focus on. And, you know, we want to, we want to grow more makeup. You know, we want to have more makeup in the line and we have a lot more makeup planned and it is all amazing. So I'm just super excited for you guys to, you know, look into it a bit more and explore it. Reach out to me with questions you have. I'm happy to, I, we're going to post um, the event link for Dr. Laura's party so that you guys, if you want to get started, um, you can place your order. If you're looking for foundation and you want to get color matched, um, I have successfully color matched hundreds of women um, just by looking at their pictures online. So we can definitely connect about that as well. She's good. She knew what foundation I needed and all, all of the things. Oh my gosh, yes. Helen says she loves this great information in the class. We're so glad. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on, Dr. Laura. I really appreciate this. This has been wonderful, as always. <laughs> Oh gosh, it's my pleasure. Let's put up some hearts and some love for Lisa for her to take time out of her day to come and educate and share with us. Because again, this is a topic that you guys have asked me a lot. And I love to stay in my swim lane too, right? That I am an essential oil educator. That is my jam. And I love to bring her in to talk about these things, especially when we're getting asked a lot and lets me know, okay, it's time to bring this to the surface. And this is empowering things for us as women to practice some self-care to have some things, but some things that are also not going to be harmful to our hormones or endocrine system or any of that. So we'll leave this up. This um, replay will be up for a month. So you can watch it. You can take notes, reach out to Lisa. We'll put all of her contact information there. Um, and again, I get nothing for saying that. I truly just love, love, love these products. They have been um, made such a difference for me and my skin and what I've been using. And when we find something that we love, just like with our beautiful essential oils, we share and we want you guys to have options for that. Um, similarly with the, like with the sunscreen and um, having that as like a skin protectant, we, when I was in Mexico, we actually got to talk to doTERRA corporate and they were saying, you know what, there was kind of some rumors that sunscreen may be coming out at some point, but they were like, we're having a hard time finding clean ingredients, something that meets our standards. They were like, we've kind of put that on the back burner because we didn't find those things. And so I was so excited that Crunchy came out with something like that, that is going to help us and, and having those things. So it's, it's beautiful. It's a lifestyle. It's a health and wellness lifestyle that we're doing. So thank it you is. And for being here. Oh my gosh. You, I thank you so much for having me in your fabulous group. I always love coming on here and sharing what I know with all of your wonderful, wonderful people. So thank you so much. Okay, we hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Check out the replay. We'll put all the links there if you wanted to try something. Or if you have questions, reach out to Lisa. She is a magical, wonderful <laughs> beacon of light for all of us in the non-toxic makeup community. Thank you so much along this Thank journey. You. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Laura. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>